how do I butcher Phoebe? Phoebe Bridge. Yeah. Phobo Bridgeo. <laughs> Phobo Bridgeo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ryan. And I'm Steve, and this is 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing a podcast. That's right, Steve. Uh, welcome to the old news segment of the podcast. Yeah. It's been a few weeks since we actually, like, this news dropped two weeks ago. Two, weeks ago, two weeks ago. Like the night that we podcasted last. So it's been two weeks. No, it's not, not quite, but just about. <laughs> just about. Just about. Uh, uh, Phoebe Bridgers. Yes. That's how you say her name, right? Yeah. We were uh, criticized for not, for, oh, if you guys, you guys would have been able to cover this in real time if you didn't podcast every other week. <laughs> Like, whatever. whatever. But anyway, she uh, she went on SNL. And I remember like like two weeks ago when we recorded, you you were talking about this. You actually mentioned it on the last episode. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Phoebe's going to play. She plays this BC Rich, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and she played it. And she played it. So Steve's, Steve is vindicated. And I'm still like regretting. Did you watch the performances? I did. Both I did. Them? Yes. But what, what, first of all, because we haven't, I've actually thought about putting Punisher on our listen list. Okay. Uh, what do you think about her music? Oh, I'm just fine with it. Sounds good For, to me. Okay. Yeah. I have no problem with it. Just Do you wait. think I would you think I wouldn't like it? I don't know. I don't know. I could see going both ways. It's really mellow. It's like the kind of music well, we'll talk about it. It's later. like good we'll coffee shop later. music. Like sure. you remember in the in the nineties and the early two thousands when you'd go to like coffee shop shows and it'd be singer yeah. songwriter or, yeah. or like indie pop sort see of that. thing. Yeah. yeah. When when I listen to Phoebe Bridgers, all I can think is you were meant for me, and, and I was meant for you. <laughs> oh, I could definitely, you could definitely trace some lines back to Jewel, yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, I like, I like the whole band setup. This, a uh, you know, full musical experience. It's not just you know, someone with an acoustic guitar doing their thing. Mm-hmm. I gotta say, like, it, it became a, it became a huge problem on the internet. Oh my god, that she smashed or tried to smash this Dan yeah. Electro. I rewatched the clip today. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's that sort of thing where once you've seen something a couple times, like you just accept it, and it's it that no part of it bothers you anymore. Yeah, uh, I think the first time I watched it, I was like, oh yeah, that's a little bit awkward, whatever. But watching it again today, like no, I'm into this. I, I'm <laughs> I'm very firmly in the camp that um the of uh, I'm in very firmly in the camp of people who are who are like you went on SNL, you had a um. If I go on SNL someday and I don't smash a guitar, I'll be disappointed yeah, with myself. Yeah, you had a uh, BC Rich uh, Bronze Warlock, and you had a Dan Electro uh, 56 Baritone. You should have smashed the Warlock. But that's <laughs> that's the my that's I mean. Well, Steve, the thing you, is, is you also have to fit the song. The song is called "I Know the End," and at the end of the song is like this, just you know, very like, uh, what would you call it? Like it's 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 this uh, epic cinematic rock right, right. breakdown. You know, it's cathartic. It's it's all these things. It's the it's the reaction that you have when you are in a personal, deep emotional relationship at some point in your life with Ryan Adams. You just sometimes get on national television and break shit. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm going to make the counter argument and say that the BC rich is not the one to smash. The Dan Electro is the one to smash because you can still buy those new. You cannot go buy a new, uh, BC rich bronze series. They don't exist anymore. Like that, that is rare. Oh yeah. It's so rare and vintage. And you can find it on any (laughs) Craigslist in any major city for like a hundred and you can go to Sweetwater and buy a new Dan Electro baritone for like 500 bucks or Um, something like that, which is actually the other funny thing. Uh, Jason Isbell tweeted about it in, in support of her, but said, Oh, she smashed an $85 guitar, which Again, the that's those, not correct. Those but Dan okay. Electro baritones, at least the new ones, and I, I have to imagine like if you find a playable old one, it's gonna be like more than that. Oh, she smashed, you know, some sort of like nineteen sixties copper finished, you know, Dan Electro baritone. I'd feel sad about that. Yeah, you can feel sad about it without being like, oh, this is dumb and this is trash and like this isn't art and this is everything that's wrong with oh. music, which is you know some people's reaction <laughs> to it. Yeah, everyone um, who got on the internet and was offended and hyperbolic about this. So it's just, 
uh, chill out. Yeah, you so know, there's not a shortage of guitars. I'll tell you that right now. Here's my here was my take on it. One, I kind of knew it was coming. I had I had sp been spoiled. Uh oh, because um, I people were t people were posting about it during the nine the West Coast during oh, the East yeah. Coast live. So I was seeing because what they do with SNL now when there's like nothing else to show on TV is on the West coast. You see SNL twice. Oh, okay. Uh, they show it in real time in like the actual live. Uh -huh. And then they show it again at its regular like gotcha. time slot. So they show it at like nine o'clock and at 11. I mean, it's been, it's been probably decades since I watched SNL, but yeah, being a, a West coast boy, to me, it's never been a live show. Right. So the, right. to hear that it is still a live show somewhere else. I mean, is as far as I know, it's shocking it's, to me. It's live. It's live on the East Coast. Um, and then, and like I said, they have a they show it at nine o'clock on the wet. So it's like right. It's li anyway, not the point. Um, the point is, uh, I had it spoiled. I knew it was coming. Uh, but even with that, like it was fun. It was um, it was a a good performance and. The, the negative reactions, I, I understand the people who are like, I just don't think you should ever smash a musical instrument. If that's the camp you're in, um, I disagree with you, but I, I get it. It's the people who are like, oh, this was premeditated, so it's not cool. Oh my gosh, like, shut my, up. My favorite take, actually, this I think this was part of Emily's take uh -huh. from Get Offset. She did a video on it, um, and her take was like, do you think Jimi Hendrix just happened to have a can of gasoline or whatever and a <laughs> right. lighter in his pocket? Oh, he always and had a he always had a big old container of lighter fluid in yeah. his pocket. It was just there, and one week he was like, "You know what? Like, I should light my guitar." On now fire. I know what to do with this. Now I know why I carry this around with me. He didn't. It's not a lighter. We're talking about guys. You go watch the the I, footage of Hendrix burning his guitar. He's got a bottle of lighter fluid. There's right. no reason to have that around on um, the stage. And I know roadies, you're about to say. Well, we use it to clean this or we use it to like wipe down tape or well, I don't care. He had it. He pre he premeditated yeah. it. Um, so, you know, again, if you just are, and that was where I was like, I kind of, I, I'm sympathetic again to people who are like, Oh, I just don't think you smash it. But if you're like, don't smash it, you should, you should, she should have given it to a kid. It's like, it's that's Phoebe, not very entertaining. Phoebe Bridgers is, is maybe, <sighs> I don't want to go this. I'm not going to go this hard. Uh, I would say Phoebe Bridgers is damn near like the Taylor Swift of bedroom pop, if that makes sense. Okay. Like she's not a big pop icon until now. She's sure. kind of getting like launched. She, you know, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, this was a good move. It got yeah, her she, in the news. Yeah, she's well, she's she's up for a Grammy this year for Punisher. Yeah, um, I think she might be up for for a Grammy for the song Kyoto as well. Um you know, just a, she had a huge 2020 and that sound that it's, you know, it's bedroom pop, whatever you want to call it. Like there are a lot of, of people who listen to that and go like, Oh yeah, this is at its core. Like a lot of her music, you can strip it back to a person in a bedroom with an acoustic guitar. Sure. But you, you know, can do that with any song. <laughs> I mean, can you do that with any song? Yeah. I think there's a lot of songs. I think we're going to talk about an album later that where maybe none of the songs you can do that. No, you could. <laughs> but are they, I mean, are they going to be good still? <laughs> Were they good to begin <laughs> with? <laughs> um, no, the, the worst, I don't, I don't even think this was the worst take. It was the most amusing take uh -huh. uh, was the, uh, the Twitter feud between Phoebe Bridgers and uh, uh, David Crosby. Oh, whatever. David Crosby uh, needs to sit down and shut up about everything. I, one, I feel like every six months he finds something on Twitter to poke his head in and, and have an opinion. It's like, who cares, dude? Like, I, th I think there was, works. There was some... Uh, doc it was that Laurel Canyon documentary. Yeah. And he was in it, and every time he came on, I was like, your opinion doesn't matter. Well, so it was just funny. Like, you're just saying stuff to to be crotchety and old. Like, nothing you said has it has any importance right now, David Crosby. Here, here's the and I'd say that to your face, David Crosby, if you're watching this. Here's the thing with this is is he has his opinion whatever but then like it it just kind of like went on like you know he, he can if he wants i guess you know you can say whatever you want and someone i think his main thing was like well you know uh 
I just don't think musical instruments should ever be smashed and just leave it at that. And then he goes on like, well, I think smashing instruments is what you do when you can't write a good song or like you're not a good songwriter. So apparently Jimi Hendrix, not a good songwriter. Um, uh, Pete, Pete Townsend. Townsend, not a good songwriter. Kurt Cobain, not a good songwriter. Sorry, guys. David Crosby thinks you're a bad songwriter. The Clash, not good songwriter. So oh, that, there might be some. And then that turned into, <laughs> you know, the whole conversation about like, oh, David's right. And I'm like, I'm like, do we really want to know what this guy's take on what is and isn't good songwriting from a guy? I, I guess he wrote Mr. Tambourine Man, and that's why I should care about him. I, I don't. Uh, people are going to get worked up. I, I know he was part of the birds. Obviously he was part of Crosby stills Nash and everyone, then later young, everyone who's upset about this performance, about this guitar smash thing one way or the other. Ah, you're so exhausting and boring. Just shut up. Here's, here's my take on David Crosby. Because some people are saying like, oh, this guy knows what real rock. It was a performance. Like there's nothing about this performance that was like, wow, this is like totally different from every other yeah. performance. The fact that it blew up at all is like man was it really that slow of a news day is that <laughs> this is the thing that everyone cares about because this is you know it's it was a fine set you know you know live music especially live Ooh. music on snl like i watched friggin like chris cornell sound awful on snl yeah. one time like yeah. it happens everyone no i and legitimately i think everybody i think there's something about the room that they're in or i don't know what but their 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 um, mix to television is has is almost I would say it's bad more time more often than it's yeah. good. And right, I don't what, think that's a, that's the performer's fault. What I did? What did I interrupt you before you said uh, about some David people, Crosby? Some people were like, "Oh, David Crosby, he's a he's a classic. He knows what rock and roll is all about." I'm like, you know what's not rock and roll? Having liver failure and then getting a liver transplant because Phil Collins paid for it. You know what? <laughs> rock and roll. Real rock and rollers kill themselves <laughs> or have their wives do it, like Kurt Cobain. Right. Sorry, if I should have trigger warning that, that was super duper dark, Steve. I'm just saying, like we're the, gonna get hate mail. The that least one. rock and roll thing you can do is like basically drug yourself until your liver Listen, liver is literally your liver is trying to kill you, and then being like, I lived a hard rock and roll lifestyle, and no hospital is going to allow me to get a liver because I live such a hard rock and roll lifestyle that I don't qualify for a new liver. Oh, this other super millionaire rock and roller is going to buy a liver for me. I mean, if you know, if he wants to buy livers for other people, then that's fine, I guess. Like if he's I ha think, handing I think out livers, he should buy Phoebe Bridgers a new guitar. There you go, there you go. Someone he, make he, amends. He David. needs to. He, what is it called? Pay it forward. He needs pay to pay it, it forward. forward. Pay that liver forward. But also, like, buy Phoebe Bridgers millions of dollars in guitar. Another, th another dumb, idiotic, weak-minded. That's right. I'm calling Ooh. you weak-minded thing that people complain about. Like, oh, she didn't even really smash. She doesn't even look strong enough to smash. Blah, blah, blah. Like, shut up. You suck and you're dumb, and I hate you because you're stupid. <laughs> here's, here's actually. No, like, here, I when I was watching it again today. I was like, mm -hmm. I don't care if it smashes like a pinata and blows into sawdust or if it doesn't break at all. I'm liking the sound that's coming out of this. Oh my gosh. Out of yeah. this guitar smashing against the fake floor wedge that has sparks flying out. It's <laughs> clearly anyone with half a brain cell can tell this is a performance piece. Yeah. This is like a fun thing she thought up to do. This isn't like, oh, I've got to really show off my strength and show off how tough I am. No, she wanted to bang a guitar around and I liked the sound of it hitting that floor wedge. I legitimately really liked the yeah. sound of it. And you know what? Incorporate it in every set. Bang mm -hmm. that guitar around every time you play that song. Uh, I kind of, I look at the Dan Electro and I'm like, I believe that thing is tough to break. First of all, it's like a five bolt neck. It's not a four yeah. bolt neck. And yeah. it's the bolts are, are longer. Yeah. Like they're spread out longer than a normal four bolt and, neck. And it's a baritone. So it's probably an extra thick neck. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. It's hollow, which makes you think like, oh, well, then it's, it's going to break. Not necessarily. It's hollow plastic infused with sawdust. Right. Like it's masonite. Think about like taking an empty milk jug and smashing mm -hmm. it into something. It's not going to break. It's just going to dent. It's going to maybe it's going to bonk, 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 yeah. bonk. That's what you're doing with a Dan Electro. I, mean, I don't I think, think I don't think it has the mass in the body 
to cause the neck to separate from it. I, I think there's some things, you know, she could have done. She could have grabbed it closer to the headstock. Um, right. She's also like, I think, 5'1". I don't think that matters. So there's not a lot of leverage there. No, it's all... <laughs> I'm positive that if we had given it a bunch of wax, you and I could have broken it. But again, I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. And anyone who's hung up on that, I think you're caring about something that doesn't matter at all. And you suck for caring so much. I, my favorite, my favorite take from this whole thing. So, um, I don't know if you noticed. In I'm in the mood to tell you people that you suck. I, okay. I, 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 my favorite take from the whole thing. I don't know if you noticed in Kyoto, uh, her guitar player, uh, Harrison Witt, Heard. apparently he's the son of one of the guitar players in Aerosmith uh, but anyway he's playing a uh, Baronic I think it's the RE1 it's the newer mm. uh, the newest I think newest ish I mean Mike Baronic makes these new crazy designs yeah, all they're the time bonkers. but it's the one with the sliding pickup right right if you've seen on Instagram if you're not following Baronic guitars on Instagram what's wrong with you him. yeah uh, so his take was because people because some people then were like, oh, that's just a Dan Electro. Some people thought it was a Duesenberg, which cracked me up. But uh, some people were like, oh, it's just a Dan Electro. Who cares if she smashes it? Mike Baranek on his Instagram said, Phoebe, I make boutique guitars. Let's do something. You can smash it. I, you know, it's fine. I've had some conversations with I, Mike. He's, he's yeah, fun. I, uh, I really kind of hope. I don't know if she's do. I, I have to imagine she's going to be doing some f other performances of that song on big stages in the future. Um, I kind of hope uh, they can work something out and, you know, maybe in two weeks, she's uh two, three weeks. She's on the Grammys doing that song and smashing a $3,000 guitar instead of a, you know, $85 guitar. She ne here's what needs to happen. She needs to continue to get more and more famous. Yeah. Go for it. I, mm -hmm. I hope you have all the success in the world. And then I hope that she becomes famous enough to cause a a uh, a reboot, a one special episode reboot of MythBusters, <laughs> and Adam and Jamie can aid her in various ways to destroy oh dozens God. upon dozens of guitars, just blowing up guitars, shooting guitars out of cannons, crashing uh, guitars and cars. Crashing guitars and cars sounds like a fun comedy series. Not crashing cars into guitars, crashing <laughs> guitars into cars. Crashing that, guitars like, you're and running and you're like trying to hit the car with the guitar? Jousting with guitars and cars. <laughs> 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 crashing guitars and cars with comedians. Good that's, the, that's the joke I'm going for. So anyways, old news. It's fun to talk about. It's fun to think about. If you got angry at all, upset at all, defensive at all on the internet or in person, talking to anyone about this, and you didn't have a chuckle in your voice when you were doing it, because you're like, <laughs> let's talk about this. If you were upset, I'm going to double down and say you suck <laughs> and you're stupid. So that's, why, that's you know, my hot take on you. So there right. you go. I don't think I have anything else. I don't really want to talk about the potential. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, potential um, implications of uh, of misogyny on this one. Oh, sure. You know, it's whatever. Just don't be dicks. Jeez, it's not If people hard. are telling you that you're sexist uh, and it keeps happening over and over again, there's not something wrong with society. There's probably something wrong with the way you talk about things. Oh, hey, while we're things. here. Because um, guess what? No one ever t accuses me of being sexist. And every now and then, if it gets hinted, I go, oh, well, let's talk about this. What happened? Let, I, you let, know, I was let, gonna... me see if I, let, let me see if I can figure out what's going on so that we can I can adjust the way I, I you know talk about the world, think about the world. If it keeps happening, I see people on the inter internet going like, oh, people are always saying that I'm racist. People are always saying that I'm sexist because it's cancel culture. If it keeps happening to you over and over and over again, there's something going on with your behavior. Just saying. It's okay if you were a dick in the past. Just do better. That's and be a dick. It's fine to be a dick. It's fun to be a dick. But find new ways to be a dick. Okay. <laughs> uh, I was speaking of people who are dicks. I was going to trash on a pedal builder, but I decided that I don't want to give him the press. Yeah, so. me either. Uh, this first ad was sent by Dan Pratt. This one's fun. It's not. It's not really even an ad. It's an Instagram post. 
Uh, well, he he sent us a screen grab of a social media post on the Guitar Nerds group. Oh yeah, do you know what the I never heard of this Guitar Nerds thing. What is that? Yeah, what is it? I, <laughs> I I have heard that there is another guitar podcast that claims to be the world's number one guitar podcast. Well, it's fine if they want to be number one, but they're not the best guitar pad podcast under the same were... name since 2014. I know yeah. that. Um, so this, this is uh, y'all y'all seeing this? It is a matching pair of built revelators. I, I tracked this down on the uh, the built Instagram page. Uh, matching pair of built revelators with integrated built-in Chase Bliss bloopers. Yes. In the pick cards. And if you're not familiar with the blooper, it's got one, two foot switches, one, two, three, four uh, <laughs> toggle switches that are like three-way switches, six knobs, and then two uh, uh, mod switches that allow you to do like crazy bonkers stuff. And then I don't, I don't know where they fit it into this guitar, but the blooper is supposed to have a bank of mini dip switches. So those are hiding somewhere. This uh, we've seen like effects built into guitars. This is a bonkers effect to build into a guitar. What are these two switches? You have a blooper, right? Yeah, those are the mod switches. You press the, uh, b before you press those, it's a, it's a somewhat normal looper. When you press those, that's what puts it into crazy wackadoodle mode. There you go. There's the blooper right so they're there. So the, they're on the bottom. That's why I was confused. Right. So like you assign the mod A and the mod B. That's your mod A switch. That's your mod B switch. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's uh, there's those. Where are those? Is this guitar also in stereo? Does it have stereo out? No, well, this is not a stereo pedal, Steve. Oh, are those not stereo? No, that's, that's MIDI input, oh, and there's okay. expression input. All so right. don't worry about this being uh, stereo or not. But Built, Built makes incredible stuff. Every time yeah. I see a Built guitar, I just drool over it. Did, I got you do, to, did you do some videos? I got to play Josh's Built guitar mm -hmm. at JHS, and it was a dream. I went and jumped on their website today. And I was actually, I was looking at the guitars they have in stock, not the ones that are custom built, the ones that are just right. there. So I don't know what it costs to do a custom build, but I was shocked at how actually affordable builds are. Mm. Like they're in like the, like the 2000 range, like, tw like mid 2000s. Interesting. Where I always, I always assumed builds were like 3000 to like 4500 or something yeah. like that. So I'm a little surprised that they're so affordable, still like well outside of my price range, but. Right closer than i thought it was gonna be there you sure. know you could sell like a dozen pedals and probably I be could, pretty close you know i say that i don't have yeah i definitely have enough gear around here that i could sell things to fund buying something like this uh, but i'm still i'm even though i'm a big admirer of built i'm still happy to admire at a distance and then maybe someday maybe someday it's kind of hard for me to justify big purchases when i already have a guitar being built by oh uh, yeah by high spirit I already know about other stuff that's coming in. It's it's a tough place to be in, you know. What else do you have it's coming so in? It's so hard, guys. Do I know about other things you have coming in? There's all you, there's always stuff coming in, dude. You know that. I'm not even talking about things I know. You just know that like who knows? Right. Like in a month someone might write me and be like I want to send you a guitar. Someone might write me and be like I want to yeah. send you amps. I want to send you it, freaking Kayline sent me a box of 22 <laughs> yeah, that of four to board pedals. Insane. This is that's my this life. Is loading guys. too slow. I'm not gonna try to figure look at those prices. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I I think the great thing in this is the the attention to color scheme and uh, oh yeah, uh, again it's coming, coming back to it, it, just sounds like we're gonna keep talking about this guy. Uh, Baranek did both a blooper uh, color schemed guitar and a mood. Color oh yeah, yeah. Guitar. Uh, I think the mood mood guitar is now at. Um, I think he sent it to uh joel hmm. i could be wrong but i saw some pictures of it at least in minnesota now when i messed around with with josh's josh's built mm -hmm. i noticed that the hardware on it like the colored plastic bits are actually painted and i'm assuming that's oh. what they did here and it seems seems like something that would be sticky and weird and funny but it worked on his guitar so they have some sort of process to paint those knobs and those switch tips and those pickup covers and stuff yeah. like that Maybe they it's were some starting kind of paint that they, you can like after it's on there you can like bake it completely dry. Maybe they were they were starting to wear on the edges mm. of his pickups, but it looked kind of good and it was giving yeah. me like confidence. Like maybe I should try painting some plastics to get like the oh, exact I thought you were color gonna be like, He was giving me some confidence. Maybe I should buy a built. <laughs> 
Well, that would that would be nice. There's so many guitars that I would love to own. Real, the reality. How many Harley Bentons? Do you have enough Harley Bentons? No. To no, sell? I don't. Not you enough to sell to, like twenty of them. I don't have enough Harley Bentons to buy a built. If I sold all the Harley Bentons, <laughs> <laughs> should I could hit up Toman and be like, send me every Harley Benton. <laughs> I didn't say I was going to review them. I just said send. Them I to just me. wanted to sell them locally so I could <laughs> buy a built. That would be the worst, oh man, douchiest thing in the world to do. I feel suddenly very self conscious about talking about all this gear. That yeah, right. I mean, it's the it's God. the it's the job that I have. Like. Yeah, it's your job. If we if this was a if this was a biotech podcast, you could sit here and talk about all the the gear that you get to mess oh, with at yeah. work all day long. Today, and I'd be like, "Oh, I don't I don't have one of those." Today, I used a fuser and Man, I'll never be a able to pump. I'll never be able to afford a fuser or a pump. And a bioreactor <laughs> that sounds very expensive it is very expensive it's probably like a three hundred thousand like dollar unit the pump i was like i don't know that could be any old pump <laughs> but the it's bio just any old pump the bioreactor now we're getting into different, different stuff here i made i made tubing assemblies today i assembled tubes and then i fused them to other tubes Make my job Steve, sound so glamorous. Steve, the tube fuser over here. Yeah, Hashtag pretty, tube fuser. I'm pretty good at that. Pretty good at fusing tubes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you were getting one of these builts. Are you saying if I got a built built? If you got a built built, a built revelator plus effects. Oh. What effects, what effects, effect do you think you would get in it? I've always wanted to have a, like a spaceship sound like delay built into a guitar like a dd3 would be good enough mm. but then like i think about it like yeah but I, I want it there to be like a momentary switch that i could like stutter while i'm racking the time knob so there's like a few mm -hmm. ideas in my head i don't know if there's like a one single standalone pedal that i because this is so perfectly fused in the pick guard where it is this layout yeah. it is the pedals layout just fused into a pit guard that happens to be the exact same color as the pedal it's beautiful it's, it's honestly beautiful. Well, the pick card is a different color than the pedal. Slightly. I guess on this other one it isn't, though. On this one it's... Right, like, but... Uh, I mean, it's close on this one. Yeah, we were or, talking about the other one with the white pick card. Yeah, I was looking at the yeah, white. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at the blue one. That's too. racist. <laughs> Why does it got to be white? Um. So, anyways... um. Yeah, I, I feel like I'd want to come up with something custom to match the guitar when right. it comes to, like, a standalone, like existing in the guitar as it exists on the face of the pedal. I don't know. That's tough. I can't th think I could pick something better than this because everything has like fewer knobs, less interesting knobs, no switches. What about a random tone it's not, generator? It's not a uh, compact like this. Right, like, right. Random tone generator. I, I always wanted to, I never did, but I always wanted to um, like mod a random tone generator because a, a random tone generator only has an output, right? That's yeah. my understanding. It only yeah. has an output. So I always wanted to modify one where with an input so you could just put it on your board. That would be nice. And have a guitar and then have your guitar just... You just wire it to the output mm -hmm. side and it's just part of your chain. And sometimes you have a random tone generated along with your guitar and sometimes you don't. Because a random... It's got to exist. Someone has to have done that. It's so, it's so freaking s simple of an idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the one that was just in my head? Oh, the pitch fork. It'd be fun to have a pitch Ooh. shifting pedal like the pitch fork, and you can actually assign it to to ramp at different speeds on there with the momentary function. Yeah, yeah. It'd be fun to have that to have like a built in, uh, you know, whammy mm -hmm. that's, I, that's in your guitar. You know, a really simple one. I bet you could fit a whole fuzz factory in a guitar. Really oh, easily. yeah, That'd for sure. And those cool. things, those things run off of like half a volt. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and oh, and the cool thing with the fuzz factory is because you know I'm thinking about like Bliss well, Factory, baby. I did think Bliss Factory, but I, I I'm thinking also the color scheme thing is uh so if you had the Bliss Factory guitar, you'd either you probably have like uh oh the Bliss green green guitar with a silver and that would be guard. cool. I was gonna say if you it kind of invert the the well, I guess it's not inverting those colors. Uh, you just go with those. I would because originally I, I guess was maybe silver guitar with green pick guard, green guitar with a black pick guard, and then all the all the chrome that mm, you already get on a build. Mm. You know, 
but I was thinking the fuzz factory and just go with um, body is is that fuzz factory like emerald green, uh huh, and then uh, pick guard. I'm thinking like either something wonky or if you're painting them, like as you're saying, the is the pick guard painted too? I think that's one of those plexi guards that's back painted. Yeah, uh, is paint it like uh, hand painted? Basically, either hand paint it. Oh, that'd be cool. Because then you're doing the Zvex thing. Get doing, it hand painted. Yeah, get your pit guard hand painted by one of the Zvex artists. Yeah. And the usually at least like a lot the the more common uh, fuzz factory hand painted are usually green and then a lot of like really bright like cheery Wizard of Audi primaries Aussie kind of reds bright. and yellows. Yeah. yeah. So I think that would I think that's what I would go with. I think that'd be cool. A pretty noisy, nasty looking and sounding it, and guitar. And it's just Steve. so fun. It's just so bright and cheerful. But it's got a freaking fuzz <laughs> factory built into it. Just with squealing out of control oh, what fuzz sound. What do those knobs do? I've got to film this thing. I'm, I'm super buried under like like Nam season demos. You're super for buried the, under things that you're actually getting paid to work on, and and doing, uh, you know, the the road case stuff. And I've still got all our videos that we did together. I, know, I, know. I loaded one up the other day and started to edit it, and I still need to finish it. Um, so I've got this massive workload on my back. By but, the time you finish editing the ones we did, I'll be on my next one week vacation <laughs> over here, over here making a couple more. Hopefully. But I, I can't. Let's just call this. Let's make this the Chase Bliss sponsorship now. <laughs> I mean, we thanks, are rolling into a Chase Bliss sponsorship. Next, huge thanks so. to Chase Bliss Audio for sponsoring yet, in a, yet again another episode of the podcast that you love. I've got the Bliss Factory here. They're not available to buy right now. Uh, but I don't think the blooper is either. Is it? Are they out? I, oh, are they? I, for some reason, I thought Blooper was semi limited. Is it not? I'm not sure. But, anyways, uh, these will be available again eventually. I've played with this thing about an hour or two so far, Ooh. and I've I'm just having a great time. I'm just having a ton of fun with it. I was a little bit worried, like, oh, what if it's so crazy? Because fuzz factories are so crazy. Yeah, it's crazy in the way that I love, and I'm actually having a ton of fun playing actual music with it. Like yeah. not just like making noises with it, which I am doing, but I'm also having fun playing music, music with it. Uh, I know that everyone who gets one of these probably is not having that experience. They might be befuddled by it because fuzz factories are crazy, but I, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So head on over to chaseblissaudio.com. Maybe. For pedals more creative than you are. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chis, Chase Bliss. We really Thanks. appreciate it. Thanks, Chis Blast. Thanks, Chis Blast. We put you on Chis Blast. What's right. new, man? Um, what's new is I have. Uh, so I brought that Strat um, over a couple weeks ago. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And I got uh, my wiring harness for that uh, from uh, Gun Street Wiring Shop. Oh, nice. This is just a promo episode. <laughs> promo so <laughs> Ryan and Steve sell out. Um, we sold but, uh, out years ago. And here we are making dozens of dollars I mean, per I, episode. I paid for. I paid for the harness. I got a, I got an artist discount, I guess. There but, you go. Uh, but I got one for that. And I got one for... Uh, the Ibanez project I have. So hopefully I'll get both of those. Well, the strats like a higher priority because it's not mine. Um, but I, I'm hoping to get both of those done this year. <laughs> Just <laughs> the strat I, again, a little sooner, but checking I, but the calendar. I'm, I'm pretty, it uh, is still February. It is still 2021. <laughs> I've got time. Uh, You've got 10 months, Steve. But Can I, but, you do yeah, it? But I got those. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's um, they're super, super obviously like Gun Street wiring harnesses are, are very well put together oh, and yeah. easy. And I'm I'll, I'm just gonna drop that in, uh, put in some strap, some regular strap pickups that aren't EMGs, and uh, and help and get that thing back up for sale. My adventure uh, uh, this week, my new thing. Yeah, what's your new thing? Uh, I bought the tubes for a while ago and I finally, I had like a couple hours yesterday where I, I was waiting for something to upload. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go do this project. I'm not even going to film it. I'm going to do this for me because that's what I've been waiting for. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to film this. I have to do, I have to film everything that I do. It's like, No, Ryan, don't film it. I replaced the tubes mm -hmm. in my Fender Reverb unit oh. because the last time I recorded with it, I commented like, you know what? These things are 
they can be pretty buggy. There's a lot of maintenance involved. They, mm-hmm. you know, you get, his, get them serviced often. And, you know, this one, like, big volume drop when you're using it. And someone commented, hey, you should probably read tube it. That's probably a tube issue. Mm. If it's like if it's quieter when you're using it than when you're not. Um, so I I think I probably paid like 40 or 50 bucks to get the tubes from it. Tongue salt tubes is what I got. Um, What's this thing? I don't know. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll finish my story with the, yeah, with yeah, the, yeah. With the, the tube reverb, with the, the fender reverb. So I swapped the tubes and lo and behold, it's, it's great now. Mm. No volume issues at all. It's funny because it's like it didn't have a tone issue. It was a volume issue. Yeah. It didn't sound like it was like dying or crapping out or anything like that. It was just like, man, it's kind of quiet versus, you know, a, a cable run into the amp without this in between. I mean, you know, depending on how your the tube is operating, yeah, it could just be, uh, it might not like sputter or anything. It's, it just might be a gain, driving a gain circuit. It might just be part of a gain circuit. And so, yeah, the, it, it'll just get quiet. Yeah, so I'm going to use that thing a lot more now that I've got it operating correctly, I suppose. So that other thing back there that I don't know if anyone can even see, it's kind of off the side here. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, an, it's a suitcase amp. It's actually a suitcase PA speaker that Grant Wilson found on our local Craigslist. <laughs> and he was like, hey, you should go get that. I thought he was saying that I should go get it for him and ship it to him. <laughs> this was like a year ago and uh i went and got it and i messaged him like, hey i got it let uh you know i'll let you know how much the shipping is and he's like no i wanted you to have it <laughs> <laughs> i've still not <coughs> been able to figure out how to get it powered uh you should look at the power oh yeah now i actually i kind of remember this it's got a weird cable right yeah yeah i could technically like try to jam things in yeah. there like alligator clips to try to power it. I'm a little afraid that I'll fry it doing that. It's, Ryan it's three started the fight. Fo- you're fo- totally fine frying amps. It's not like you've never fried an amp before. <laughs> um, it's got three prongs. If it was two, then I'd just be like, Oh, one's positive. One's negative. N- nothing can go wrong. But the, something about there being three and me knowing one's the ground makes me worried. And I probably shouldn't be. I should probably still just it's probably really obvious. Which one's the ground. Which it, they're in a row. Which one do you think? The middle. One. You think the middle's ground? So yeah. you think think if I connect a positive and a negative to the two outside ones, it'll work? Unless it needs the ground, then you need to connect all three. I I just what's the worst that could happen, Ryan? You die? Yeah, the worst that could happen is that I die, Steve. No, the worst that could happen is that you're mangled into a veg, vegetative state. <laughs> <laughs> and I can my only way to communicate is by turning a single light on and off. Yeah. 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 That's the worst that could happen. The Ryan. worst that could happen is that I survive. Let's, Ryan, let's get, is this the worst thing that could happen to you? Let's get dark. <laughs> no, I'd go to I'd go two beeps because in my head I'm like, it could be worse. <laughs> Things could always be Yikes. This is worse. a dark episode. Yeah. You made a joke about suicide. Now we're it making jokes a, about it, Oh, it was a joke. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It was a joke about suicide, Steve. We are going to I, get I had originally that. planned that out a lot better to make it more of a Kurt didn't kill himself joke. And it just, it's it too just late, kind of got Steve. away from me. That was like twenty five minutes ago. You can't backtrack on it now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I had something else new, but I don't remember what it was, and that's okay. This next ad was sent to us by Andy Harper. And is it Andy or Andrew? I don't know. I wrote down Dan, Dan, I wrote down Andy Harper, so this that must is, be what uh, it is. from Reptile Dentist. No, you? no, I just I titled. Oh, the, you just titled it that, that. because this this is a case of reptile oh. dentistry. So with my beloved bronze series BC Rich Warlock, I simple studied how the support should be positioned, pre-drilled the holes for the screw. Then carefully screwed the five wood screws by hand until the bridge was essentially locked in place. Oh, you're reading like later in on this. Let me find the first post. Oh, this is a short primer on the subject. (laughs) Let me let me be very clear. Andy did not do this. This is an article he found online and sent to us. This guy has a collection of BC riches with wraparound bridges, and he's just beside himself that the wraparound bridges do the thing that they do where they tilt forward. So he's finding all kinds of solutions to keep them from tilting forward. This is a short primer on the subject of how to fix the wraparound bridge on the base level bronze series of the BC Rich electric guitar. Oh, so this is how this is the bridge it's supposed to have. Right. As I see it, the problem is best explained by expl- ex- by saying the soft wood used in the bronze series isn't up to the job of supporting the lateral forces placed upon 
the wraparound bridge. I point the finger at the wood symbol because I have not found a wraparound bridge equipped platinum series or higher BC rich, which suffers from this chronic ailment. So I'm assuming that the better series benefit from a firmer wood. We could all benefit from a firmer wood. Uh, <laughs> while no doubt the best fix is to take this, uh, the guitar to a professional luthier as a training blah, whatever, man, before we put this is so like, like written, before we proceed, understand that the wraparound bridge design places lateral forces on the bridge, which other non-tremolo bridges... No, the guy wrote it like he's writing like, like a college paper. I don't yeah. think we need to read the whole thing. Let's just describe what we're looking at here. It's one of those wraparound bridges. Um, also, he says this is a mockingbird, but isn't this a warlock? There's two different ones here. Oh, this one is a mocking. There's right, the right. Bird. We're dealing with two different guitars here, and so his solution on the mockingbird was to take the the plate out of the strap trim yeah. without the the block underneath it, yeah. and screw it, bolt screw it into mm -hmm. the body flat to become the place where the strings are anchored. I kind of turning the bri the 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 wraparound bridge into just a normal tune matic is it bad that I like don't completely hate that one? It will it will work. This is functional, even though ugly. This is an ugly but functional solution to the thing that's bothering him. The thing that's bothering him is that the bridge is tilting forward, which is actually really normal for this style of bridge. Yeah. It is annoying, but it is normal. It's part of the way they're designed, unfortunately, because the 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 bar that sits in between the two posts the 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 the, the top and bottom mm -hmm. stopper is it's too narrow and they just kind of rock forward yeah. like that it has nothing to do with the wood of the guitar it has to do with the design of those I had bridges a, i had a, a epiphone les paul jr that did this so the really bonkers thing about this is that on the warlock instead of doing the strat bridge thing he drilled five wood screws in around the bridge to hold it in place. Yeah. This is the sketchiest guitar repair I've ever seen. Repair modification yeah. I've ever seen in my life. Hey, but here's photos of the results, which while it doesn't look bad from a few feet away, <laughs> admittedly isn't all that attractive a solution from up close, but Hey, no more worry about my bridge coming loose and slashing my face open. That's what he was worried about. The thing is, is like the the posts sit. So He's just introduced shrapnel into the situation. Yeah, the posts are so far back. Like when you look at the picture of the Mockingbird, there is a solid like quarter inch between where the posts are. No, this is not coming off. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Between where the posts are and where the opening is. This whole thing would have to like tilt forward and then like bend and scrape out all of the wood underneath it and then just go fling. Imagine being this anxious, like so anxious about a common, although flawed, visually flawed How do you even bridge design that you not only like commit wood screws to it in the sketchiest possible looking way that I can imagine that then you go and you make like a geo cities website about it. <laughs> do, do you know what this guy's website is? Or do you, do, I you sent you the pictures? link to the website. No, it's like a really you did. simple old school, like HTML website that this guy put together. I'm telling you, it feels like, like a college paper from the 1990s. Yeah. It's Texas think tank like, uh, net. Oh, I did a study on the design of a guitar bridge, and here are my findings. That's oh my gosh, you forgot. You did not <laughs> cut, cut, and cut the part in yeah. where he explains that the idea for the five screws down solution on this warlock is the flying buttresses of Notre Dame. That's what he claims that they're inspired by. And that's a bonkers. Or argument. as we like to call them in art history class, the flying butt resses. Butt resses. <laughs> it's a, the what, you're going to have to put this link in the episode description so people can go and check it out for themselves. This is it's it's inspiring. It's inspiring that in this day and age, instead of I mean, who knows when this person wrote this? 
that in the day and age where you can go online and go to groups and forums and ask for opinions from people like, hey, what do you think I should do about this? This guy jumped over all of that and committed to wood screws and mangling other bridges for like haphazard solutions. You know, he didn't have to mangle a strap bridge like that. They make these little stop. Tar- I have one in a drawer. Yeah. These little stop bars that the, the ball into the screw just hooks into. And there would have been two screws. And he wouldn't have had to sacrifice a strap bridge to do that. And it would have looked better. He has a short scale. This website is called Mike Kimbrough's Short Scale Inner Sanctum. <laughs> He's got a lot of... Uh, he has an old Squire Cyclone. Good for him. He's got a lot of BC riches for a short scale guy. Yeah, he's got a oh, he's got one of those washburns. He's got this funky looking washburn. Has thing. he done any terrible repairs to any of the other ones? I don't know. I'm not looking. That I feel close. like this guy's got too many guitars to be doing this sort of thing. Yeah, he's got a Squire Vista Series Jagmaster looking thing. Those are cool. He's got a Axis style Slammer. Gamer Slammer. I don't, whatever. I don't want to look at this anymore. Should we do the album review? Think about this anymore. Let's do a sponsorship. Sponsorship. This week's second sponsor is Big Ear Pedals, made by Grant and Karen somewhere around the Nashville, Tennessee region. Big Ear Pedals offers just some really simple, cool. I was using, okay, I was using the L on bass at church this week. How is the L on bass? Not the L. Sorry, the Albi. The Albi on bass. I found I found a setting. It's uh, it's uh, Super Neil Four. Super Neil Four has a a really prominent um, octave mm. on the reverb that I. That's what I was using it for on the bass. Yeah, the Albi is super fun. It is a curated multi effect. That means that you don't get to dive into sub menus and all the little tweaky settings that you usually get to on multi effects. They're curated. There are eight presets here that are all set up professionally, a professional preset guys mm-hmm. made to give you a taste, a sampling of the beautiful and wonderful new wavy ambient sounds of yesteryear and today year. So go check out the Albi. Look up some demos of it. It's a fun pedal. Huge thanks to Grant and Karen over at Big Gear for supporting the show in all the ways that they support us and being part of our community. So go check check out out Big Ear. BigEarPedals.com. All right. You ready to do this album review? Ready to make some boomers angry? (laughs) Did you hate that? Did you really hate this that much? I didn't hate it. Uh, we're talking about uh, King Crimson in the court of the Crimson, Crimson King. Uh, I will. The thing that I do were hate, they trying to go for like a, a race car uh, palindrome thing there? Maybe. I mean, in the court of is it? But your band is called King Crimson, and your album is blah 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 Crimson King. Right. That was it's the only point. A little bit samey, samey. Yeah. Uh, my biggest complaint about this album. And has been my complaint forever before I even listened to it. Mm-hmm. Ugliest album art in the history <laughs> of <laughs> albums that get referenced by guitar players more than they should be. It is, it's not just ugly, it's like amateur. It is like amateur hour album art. It looks like art that you would see in like a, uh, you know, like a county fair. I think that was kind of the point, man. This is basically, okay, I'm just going to, I guess I'm getting to have. They have, excuse me. They have decent and good album art on their other albums. I looked it up. I didn't look it up. This album, for some reason, is like this their is most the, like famous album cover that gets used on all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And it's so ugly. This it's such a, a bad this illustration. This is the album art that inspired and the, probably the music that inspired the animated version of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it's so much fun looking at straight up some dude's nose. How do you think everybody who knows us feels all the time? They're just looking up our noses. Take a look. Does this make you feel the way you feel when you look at King Crimson? How covers? does it feel? <laughs> oh, so about the music, now that I've done my little art critique thing about this terrible album art that shouldn't be... It should, like. 
you see this art put on, I've seen it printed on guitars. I've seen it printed on shirts. I've seen it printed on all sorts of stuff. Like it's not, you shouldn't see this art anywhere, but an album. If it only existed on the album, I'd be like, well, that's the album art. The fact yeah. that it's getting used over and over again, like it's the freaking uh, Rolling Stones, like tongue icon. It's not good enough art for that. Right. It's did, not fun to look at. Aside from the name, did you know very much about King Crimson? I had, I'd heard the 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 I'd heard the song. I've heard it multiple multiple what, times. Twenty first uh, century schizoid man. Uh, no, the in the court of the Crimson King. Oh, that's funny because twenty first century schizoid man was the one song that I was familiar with, but I was familiar with it because Kanye sampled it. Oh, <laughs> I'll say like at the beginning of the album that was the, that was the first song. Yeah, and I was like. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah. This this is gonna uh, be fun. I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna like this. And I liked where it was going the whole time. Yeah. And, and it was so horny. It was super duper horny. And then like the next three songs, I'm like, okay. This is just very, yeah. very chill and very mellow. There's a lot of fluty stuff going on here. I kind of I kind of thought after the first track and then the second track. The second track is very like dropping acid, Pink Floyd. Oh yeah, vibes. Um, and you're not a Pink Floyd fan, right? I'm not. You're well, not. I think I think my note on the first song, mm-hmm. I was like, oh man, there's like a heavy like late Beatles influence here. Yeah, and I'm digging that. And the and the thing is, is there were parts, and it's interesting. Like I think stylistically, it's really interesting. Is the way whatever effect, I, it's probably like Octavia or something. Um, on the guitar is being used and the guitar playing is so staccato that I actually had a lot of trouble. And I, I was listening to this while trying to, while putting my kid to bed, just staying in the room with her. Um, but like, I'm still not really sure which parts of like solo sections were guitar and which parts were saxophone, right? which I actually thought was really cool. Sure. Um, it se- definitely was not the guitar album. I was expecting it. To yeah. Be. The second, the second track being like this kind of big turn into, big proggy ambient whatever i thought was fine except like you said it just stays there um here's my thing about most of the songs and there's only five songs on this album uh my thing with most of the songs all the like the slow kind of like epic sounding songs yeah i kind of feel like they they heard nights of with white satin and just riffed on that for four songs. Nights with White Satin. Uh, Nights, Nights in White Satin by Moody Blues. Oh, okay. I'm not familiar. I've, I've probably heard it. Go but. listen to that song later and you'll hear exactly what I'm talking about. After listening to this album, I kept, I kept having that thought throughout all those songs on the back end of it. And I had to go listen to Nights in White Satin mm. immediately after. And boy, was it a breath of fresh air is such a <laughs> palate cleanser is such a better song than the back four songs. Well, the rest of this album and it came out years before this album. Really? So it's definitely I didn't, something. I didn't know Moody blues was that old. It's de- well, it came out like 66, 67, something oh, okay. like that. So like a, just a couple of years. Cream, King Crimson is 69 or 70. I think, I think this album, I want to say was 60. Eight, but whatever. But anyways, I mean, they're all, they probably all got their influences yeah. from someone else that we don't know, but I'm just going to say it. Moody blues did it better boys. I, I, you know, I think I would listen. I, I, in the middle of track three, the note that I had is I would listen to this again, but I kind of like, I said it, you know, it's a bit wordy. Um, and so I think that's kind of where like, uh, but, you know, I said it's a bit wordy. I can see where it fits in the broader British prog sound. And I think that's like this album. No, this album kind of predates what I think a lot of people consider Floyd's best work by like six or seven years. Sure. Um, but the difference is like Moonchild, uh, like David, that Moonchild is a David Bowie ballad in that should have been shoved in the middle of Labyrinth. <laughs> Like I said, and this was my, this was kind of where I got with this is like the problem that I had was I, I think after I agree after 21st century schizoid, man, you're kind of hearing the same sound for like several songs in a row. Yeah. And And if if you want that, that's great. And I get prog is long, but I thought the music was fine. 
but the lyrics were like so dumb that <laughs> well just because here's what i mean is like um dumber than taylor swift yes whoa um well they're just okay the it, this is what happens I, this is this is what I, I wasn't mean. actually paying attention to the lyrics, so I'm I'm interested to hear what I what I mean by what this quote here. is like. Well, I can't quote anything because uh, it's like it's like oh, I quoted Taylor Swift something about Moonchild and the you you're in the moon child. I don't know, <laughs> uh, but that's the thing is like when you're when okay if I'm at work, I'm at work. I'm filling out. I'm doing a spreadsheet. I'm welding. I don't know, uh, doing my thing, you know, uh, and. I'm like, uh, oh yeah, I'm like, you know, just listening. I'm like, oh, da, da, 21st century kids. So like, so I'm gonna be like, oh, that song's sick, or uh, you know, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm maybe I'm listening to Floyd. I'm like, call what? her Moonchild, dancing in the shadows of a river. Lovely Moonchild, dreaming in the shadow of the willow. Oh, it seems all right to me so far. Yeah. Yeah, in the shallow shadow of Willow. You can't be in the shadow of Willow. He's like two and a half feet tall, idiots. I think they, uh, of the Willow, Steve, of a tree. Oh. Not oh. not Willow, the Lord of the Rings character. Well, it's not a Lord of the Rings character. Well, you know what I mean. In the Willow, you know. Willow, he's a Val Kilmer, friend of Val Kilmer. A friend, friend, <laughs> friend of Val Kilmer, <laughs> Willow. Um, but I, but I, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like the, the all of the other... It's no, not even like these, no, this these is, lyrics are very Tolkien-ish. Yeah, and I just I'm just like uh, Which is of that time, that you know, late sixties, early seventies yeah, sort of thing. But vibe. the thing is, is this is what they make fun of on like Ephesus or Family. <laughs> like this and like Led Ze- Wizard Rock. Right, right. Wizard Rock. No, it's it, this is totally soft Led Zeppelin. Um, did yeah, it's, it's <laughs> that's why I say like what I kind of felt like was this is what would have happened if Floyd would have listened to way more like Zeppelin one, Zeppelin two. Right. Right. And they were just like, now let's not write. Wish you were here. Let's write. Wish you were here. But it's Aragorn singing about how, how he wishes, uh, (laughs) Steven Steven Tyler's daughter (laughs) was here. (laughs) What the hell is her name? I don't even remember. Imagine if you could take the Lord of the Rings movies back in time and show people in like 1972. Oh my gosh. It would blow their minds. Um, did you, so I originally sent you, you sent me the link and then I sent you a different link and then I listened to a, listened to it in a different place. Did you listen to the song, a man, a city? Um, it's on the deluxe version, but I it's like not. the deluxe version has like the five songs and then it has like reprises of four oh. of the five songs. And then it has the song Amana City. And Amana City is interesting because there are parts of it that just sound like the music from the Batman, like the 60s Batman. <laughs> which like you think about it, you take Well now the, I'm in. <laughs> you take like the <laughs> bam, bam, out and like just a dun 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 yeah. like it's kind of got like a weird like you do that dun, 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 for loop for like three minutes. And then play some atonal guitar on it, and it's kind of proggy. Yeah. Right? It's kind of got like a proggy beat going on and whatever. My comment was just like, is Amanda City just a TV show theme song? That's the other thing about this album that, like, I don't want to say it would make it better, but it would have made it better. Why do you write a... I mean, I guess maybe people were into it on the time, or they were smoking a lot of weed. I don't know. It's possible. You write a five minute song, which is already plenty prog long enough. Mm -hmm. And then you just like, I mean, I kind of felt inspired. Here we go. What's he going to do? Because I know, you know, I'm not that I'm not like a YouTube quality guitar player. (laughs) Like that means anything, but maybe I could just come over here and go. Oh, sure. And I'm like, what is this? I actually, I enjoyed the parts where it was like, well, now, now let's make some clanky noise. I enjoyed the, the parts in various songs where they did like, like transition into that. Like, oh, I, let's, let's do, let's do some weird little things here. Let's do some pots and plans, pans clanging together. I was okay with it as a, cause as it was like, a, it was a break from like the a, boredom. <laughs> I was, a, I would be okay with it as like a 15 second thing, but I think one of the songs has it for like three straight minutes. Yeah. And I'm just like. But I still was more okay with that than like <laughs> the the poorly you know 
copied version of Knights in White Satin, which I still, I will die on this hill that King Crimson was just trying to rip off Moody Blues. And I have nothing to support that, but I definitely, like I said earlier, went and listened to Knights in White Satin immediately after this album and enjoyed it infinitely more than this album. So deal with it. <laughs> Would you listen? So I take it you will not listen to this again. No, I'm not interested in listening to it again, but I, I probably got like three or four songs into Moody Blues, and I think I'm going to have to listen to more Moody Blues because I was having a great time listening to that. <laughs> they had some jams. Not not quite as proggy, and there's more like a blues and sp- mm-hmm. in, like inspiration going on with the with the guitars and moody blues obviously that's you know the name of their band but they had some solid jams where i didn't hear that from king crimson did they have um like not just jams like they're jams but they also have like a really really strong like pop sensibility where it's like you want to hear this song like it's gonna it's gonna earwig you you know it's gonna get stuck in your head where I could, I don't think I could say that for King Crimson. Sorry, King Crimson. So this is a screen grab sent to us by uh, Justin Sveck. Uh, he said he is a picture of an EHX freeze pedal. Yeah. And there's only one knob on a freeze and mm-hmm. a fast, slow latching switch, and then the foot switch. The knob has been gorilla glued in place. We need to start a Kickstarter. To get this knob unfrozen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did you, have you, not only is this meta, but you know, like apparently Gorilla Glue is a meme right now. Yeah. Cause some lady Gorilla glued her hair. Yeah. And then some guy was like, oh, that's fake. I'll prove it to you. And he girl, tr- Gorilla glued a like red solo cup to his mouth. Uh oh. And then had to go to the hospital oh, because no. obviously that's a bad idea. I don't know if I've ever used Gorilla brand glue. But anytime I've used super glue, it's like, oh, if I touch my fingers together, they're not going to come apart for yeah. a while. Gorilla glue is even, at least like this style that's in this picture, is even worse because it's a foaming glue. You essentially, with those super heavy duty glues, you essentially have to wait for your skin to slough off. Yeah. Well, you have you, do you know about like the development of those? No. So, uh, here we go. Cyano, Lay some science on me. I think they're called cyanoacrylics. Mm. Cyanoacrylates. Acrylates? I think that's right. Um, were originally developed uh, by the military to use... Like field dressing stitches? To be field dressing. I guessed it! So literally, it's like if you were like bleeding out, they would just take this stuff... Just gunk you full of glue. gunk you full of it to stop the bleeding. Wow. I bet that stings. And, and like get you... Well, yeah, but it's better than like... Bleeding out. You're bleeding out. We can, There's no way in hell we can like suture this back together fast enough. We're just going to throw this stuff in you and we'll deal with it, you know, tomorrow. I love it. Kind of a thing. Uh, yeah, I guess it, you know, that didn't work. Uh, but, but they developed, they developed <laughs> yeah, a great, it glute. stopped the bleeding, but people still died I, every you know, single actually, time. Like, I don't really know what, why it failed. Like maybe it was too much, too, too I'm glue. I guess that it was impossible to remove. And so your wounds yeah, never, I'm, never I'm, healed. I mean, I think that's fair. Correctly. Like you ended up healing with a giant gaping hole in you eventually. Like yeah. that is my guess as far as, you know, using Gorilla Glue to suture your wounds goes. Yeah. Uh, Justin's Justin Sveck's other comments on here are, I'm guessing the price is firm <laughs> and the seller's demeanor is as cold as ice. <laughs> this is all jokes that it is the freeze pedal. I mean, I forget what that knob even does, but this person did not want that have, knob to move. You don't move. have this pedal, right? I do not. Do you just have the freeze function on the... Doesn't the pitch drop have a pitch... The the pitch fork, fork have a freeze no, it function? Does no, it does not. But the uh, the game changer sustain pedal is essentially right, a freestyle right. pedal. It, it grabs the, the fraction of the note that you're playing and sustains it out like a piano uh, sustain. Um, that... This guy probably spent, you know, like a couple bucks on Gorilla Glue. He should have gone and spent 15 bucks on a lock knob. <laughs> the product the, the product exists. The funny the funny thing with this, well, or he should have gone and bought a bottle of Grolsch beer 
And he should have done the trick where you put the the rubber washer under in between the knob and the pedal. The the thing I will say to this, I don't even know how you get these knobs off. Yeah, because because a, a lot of these uh, a lot the of EHX these EHX knobs, EHX knobs, EH and X, EHX knobs, right? You can't get them off, right? Stupid. Yeah, they're on there really firm to the point where a lot of times. Uh, I've seen people online like, hey, I tried to take this knob off and I broke yeah. the shaft off the knob. That would have been a better solution for this guy to just shear the entire shaft off and just be like, ah, oh, it doesn't need a knob anymore. Yeah. No, yeah, just break it and then use your, then you have to like push down on it with your thumb to turn it and you get it to where it is and you'll never knock it ever again. Like I've thought before, a lot of pedals should have knobs where, it doesn't have a shaft and a knob on it. Like it is sheared off at the base and then you use uh, like a, like a, um, a Dremel to just cut a groove in it that you could stick your pick into There's a and turn it like a flathead screwdriver. There you know? was a company called like black arts. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember those. So I think it's black arts that they, uh, their pots were all, uh, like Philip head. Yeah. Screwdriver or Someone not did it. There you go. straight, straight slot standard. Yeah. Um, so like, I don't know if you could use a, a pick, but like sure de definitely if you, like I have in one of my, uh, gear bags, does the, the, um, screwdriver from a solderless cable. Mm. No, I bet you could use a pick on them just fine. Yeah. That's like what they're for. Like jam That's a pick in there. For. I use screw. I use guitar picks to tighten and loosen screws all the time. <laughs> I use them for the back of the camera clips because oh. the uh, the camera clip that goes on the tripod, uh, you're supposed to use a quarter to tighten oh. them, but I use a guitar pick. Oh. Yeah. I saw this camera clip thing where you like clip it to your pants and stuff. Mm. Belt. I think Peter McKinnon was selling it. Cool story. Yeah. You want to do housekeeping and get us out of here? Yeah. So uh, this week, in house, if you want to support the show, uh, head on over to patreon.com slash 60 cycle humcast. Uh, I feel a little bad little about this episode, Steve. Adult, why? Because we did this at the end? We were mean. I was mean at the beginning, calling people stupid, even though they are. Uh -huh. I trashed on King Crimson. Yeah. You made a suicide joke. We owe it to our Patreons. Okay. I'll, are I'm you, sorry. Are you, are... We owe a better episode to our Patreons, sorry, is what I'm saying. Sorry, guys. Next, uh, next time, we'll do better. But, uh, this week we have uh, three new folks joining us at the five dollar level. Uh, three, wow! Alex Ray, hi Alex. Mike Sveta, hello Mike, and John McNicholas. Greetings, John. And with that, that brings us to our goal from actually from last year. Oh, what of one hundred supporters on Patreon? <laughs> oh no, wrong one! <laughs> Yay! There we go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> A hundred. That feels good. Yeah, and so like I said a, a couple few weeks ago, uh, here we go. Uh, also supporting us on Patreon are Moss Land, JL Baumgartner, Peter Carpenter, Francis Stokes, Joe Heisey, Matt Hart, Peter Bright, Tom Maxson, Jason Welch, Laura Garcia, Matt Williams, Jake Andrews, Josh Shaw, Stephen Fine, Stephen Fines, Carol Lamb, Elijah Perella, Ryan Helt. Jerome Radcliffe, Colin Angel, Kenneth Kirsch, Paul B. Hogue, Jason Trowbridge, Peter Madonna, Tim Lannon, Lazy Cat Rye, Brent Pembleton, Robert McDowell, Paul Heinberg, Johnny. Just Johnny. Johnny. David Christensen, Ian Finlayson, Pete from over there. Tim Rafa, Craig Dubler, Steve Travelby, Zoe June, Don Krause, Mike Park, Liam Deacon, Miles Page, Joe Tr Terwilliger, Andrew Encinas, Michael Eptic, Andrew Bimson, Mike Sanderson, Vorp Effects, Elliot Longenecker, Mike Oxbick, <laughs> Andrew Gray, Patrick Armstrong, Gavin Vanderland, and Josh Lucas, uh, Ben Fair, Paul Hook, Peter Stevens, Michael Loner, Lanner. It's that weird. It's got the O with the thing. Tom Linane, Shane Murray, Wesley Scott, Zach Hale, Robert Butterworth, Dan Pratt, Michael Weissen, Lele. David Ferraro, Grant Wilson from Bigger FX, uh, Damian Martinez, Nutter Guitars, Matt Tobin, Tim Cornfield, Michael Van Zandt, Joe Travis, Grant Gilmore, Lance Phillip, Bruce Bacon, Philip Carter, John White, Sander Hessels, Matt Hadley, Michael Freer, Co Schneider from the Flippin' Flippers podcast, uh, Ian Ferguson, Tom Kelly, Sean Arbo, 
uh, Craig Breslin, Aviv Shetrit, uh, Jason Fuzzmonger, Aaron Willahue from the Just Surprise Me podcast, Rob Nordvik, Matthew Phelps, Get Offset podcast. It's just Get Offset. I think it's the whole just, podcast I don't is know supporting if it's the whole us. Podcast. It might not. Anyway, uh, Brett Alexander, Dave Lee, Kevin E. Quits from E. Quits Guitars, Michael Newman, and then our old, old school guys, Adam Dolhanik, Nathaniel Bernecker, Alex Booth, uh, Kevin Triplett, and I don't have Doug Cower on this list, but we just charged him a bunch of money. <laughs> Something happened with the the old school Podbean uh, patron program that a few people were still on, where Doug and another guy got charged for like four months all at once, and I have no idea what happened. I wrote them both, and I haven't heard them tell me what happened or if it needed to be sorted out yet. So... No idea what's going on there, but huge thanks to all 100 of you. That is ridiculous. There's a yeah. hundred people supporting this show through Patreon. Uh, that money goes to make this show possible. We pay for bills with it. We pay for dinner so that we don't have to bust our butts cooking dinner over here on podcasting nights. Yeah. It pays for travel expenses to make content. It pays for cameras and computer replacements when beers get spilled and things like that. <laughs> it, it lets us front in, uh, front in some of the merch we do. I, yeah. I've got, I'm a few weeks behind on sending out merch packs, but I'm getting caught up. I'll get caught up someday. It re it really, it is the money that makes this show possible. Uh, we take a, a little bit off the top to put in our pockets for a little bit of compensation for the time that we put into making the podcast. And even with that, it is money going into the podcast. So huge thanks to all the Patreons. We're happy to hit 100. Now let's hit 1,000, right? Then I'll read 1,000 names. It'll just be an episode <laughs> where I'm reading names. Just names and names and names. At and that names. point, we'll just get programmed the robot to read the names. Maybe we should lock it down now. Now there can't be any more than 100. We're locked at 100. Never will there be another one. That's stupid. It's really stupid. And we're not. The only way that. that that works is when we add 101, it'll just be like, if you're below a certain dollar amount, you just get kicked out. <laughs> so if you, if so you all, highest bidder, so if number 101 is only like $1, we're like, no, that's, wow. this is stupid. That's, that's awful. That's the opposite of what we should be are doing. Are we, are we mirror versions of ourselves? Are we mirror universe? Tonight, that, yeah, okay, so we had this topic come up. Well, I guess we're going to keep going. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, we had this topic come up in a group chat, I think. Uh, was it in a group chat or was it no, in, uh, in the Facebook group? Aaron posted somewhere, Aaron Abubo of the Gearsome podcast, that he has just started watching his first ever Star oh, Trek Oh, that's series. where it was. Yeah. He has started on the original series. And so uh, there was some joking about mirror universes. Yeah. Us. And people are like, oh, well, you know, Ryan and Steve have beards. Uh, and in the Mirror Universe, you know, Mirror Universe Spock and Mirror Universe uh, Kirk have goatees. So the idea is that, like, the beard is what signifies the Mirror Universe. No, it's a goatee. We goatee. have beards. Riker beard. has a beard. Riker does have a beard. But the Mirror Universe version of Riker has a goatee. Is, there is no Mirror Universe version of Riker. You don't know that. What about Cisco? Cisco has a goatee. Was there a mirror universe version of him? I don't remember if he has If a you have a goatee, goatee in regular universe, then in mirror universe, you you are clean shaven. I was or just, you have a beard. I just want to know why people assume that we're not the evil. Oh, we for the, sure are. That we're not the mirror universe versions. We are for uh, sure. Ryan and Steve. Yeah, we are the bad ones. There's good ones waiting over <laughs> in the next universe over, guys. And they're clean shaven. And they're better at guitar. <laughs> I mean, that's not hard. <laughs> Are you going to do a song? No. All right. Bye, that, everyone. I was just going to read the list. Stay grounded. See ya.